fresh out the oven. What is cracking everybody? It's Mega Pie Man here and welcome to another look at my map video. This time for CP Burial A1. So Gridiron is currently in hiatus past Gridiron, a the other map that I was currently working on. It's on hiatus right now because we have reached the voting period of the Roll of Three major contest for TF2Maps.net. You can find a link to the thread in the description of this video. If you would like to go over there, check out the maps, leave some votes. <clears throat> because we've hit the voting period, that means I can't update the map until that contest is over. So, in the meantime, I'm working on this. What is this? This is possibly a Halloween map that I may get done for this Scream Fortress. If they do Scream Fortress this year and Team Fortress 2, I don't know if they will. I don't know if I'll get it done. So the past two years, I've had Scream Fortress projects. Two years ago, I had Synthetic, which was a Halloween version of Koth Synthetic that I worked with... Uh, Blaholtzin, that G-Man, Huddy, and a couple other people, FGD5. I worked with them to do a recent skin Halloween version of that map. Since I made the original, I wanted to do a, uh, a Ween version, Halloween version, and Synthetic turned out to be pretty good. Uh, last year, well, at least I, I liked it. I think it turned out well. Last year, I worked with Blaholtzin, that G-Man, and a bunch of other people that they put together on PD Farm Again, which is a player destruction map that we built from the ground up. Started that in April of last year. Was able to get it done before Scream Fortress. Unfortunately, neither of those maps got picked up for Scream Fortress last year or the year before. But now, this is going to be the third year we're trying to make a Scream Fortress map. Whether or not I'll get this one done in time, I don't know. I'm not going to push too hard for it, because I, I, it's I, it's sort of like a side project, unlike the other two years with Farmageddon and Synthetic Event, where I pushed a lot for those, especially Farmageddon. Uh, this one, I'm not going to push a lot for it, because I don't know if I'm necessarily going to get it done. I don't know if it's any good, and I don't want to rush it. But the entire idea behind this map is that it is somewhat connected to... Synthetic event. Synthetic event I made this whole thing with the whole backstory of of Madame Sinclair, who had a mansion slash science lab where she was trying to figure out how to bring people back to life with souls and whatnot, and ended up putting souls in a robot, and that was the boss that would show up every now and then on that map that you could fight for uh, rare spell and whatnot. Um, for this one, it's connected to that because Blaholtzin made this overlay, as you can see right there, the big Sinclair Burial Company, made that overlay for when we, we were working on Synthetic, but I didn't use it because it didn't really seem to fit anything. They made that overlay as to be an alternate version of the Happy Farmers Cooperative overlay that I used in the original version of Synthetic, but I didn't end up using this in Synthetic Event, I don't believe, and I thought okay, well, I don't want to put a team together because I don't know if this map will get done. I don't want to rush the map. So instead, I'm going to use the stuff that I have that was made for Synthetic Event and Farmageddon in this map. What can I do with it? Well, there's this overlay for the Sinclair Burial Company that I haven't done anything with. Why don't we do something with that? And that's how we get CP Burial. Right now, we have A... You can see right here, the first of three points, as this is a three-point CP map, attack and defend map. Now, there are only there are very few three CP attack and defend maps in Team Fortress 2. You've got Mountain Lab, you've got Man Manor, which they basically have the same layout, small differences, very, very minor, and you have Mercenary Park. So, this map is inspired by Mountain Lab slash Man Manor, not really Mercenary Park, a lot, a little bit of Mercenary Park thrown in there, and Moss Rock, as well as Gorge, since I really like those attack and defend maps, even though they are both only two points and a single stage. This is, of course, a single stage. I'm pretty happy with how A turned out. Blue spawns originally over here. They've got three different doorways. They spawn in here, push out this way. You can go out this door, out this door, out this door over here. Uh, pretty Did a pretty good job blocking sight lines, so there shouldn't be too much ridiculous sniper-wise. 
Although there might be that might be a little bit of a cheeky cheeky sideline, but you know we'll see how that goes uh, as things go. When I tested this earlier today, that didn't seem to really be a problem, but uh, I did notice that maybe I overdid the lighting a little bit. I'm using the lighting that's very similar to Man Manor's lighting, and Man Manor's lighting surprisingly the way they did it, it's a night map, but it's bright enough just with the environmental lighting that you don't really need to add a whole lot of other lighting in the map. Man Manor doesn't have any phantom lights at all, which is something I used quite a bit for farm again. And I think I might have overdone it a little bit, trying to make sure that this is bright enough for uh, a night map. Because even though in Team Fortress 2, a map is set at night, maps are not actually supposed to be dark in the gameplay space. Everyone always brings up pipeline payload race pipeline set in the middle of the night but it's very bright so you can see well enough of what's going on and i'm pretty happy with how a turned out outside of the lights i think it'll be decent to defend you've got a little bit of a defend space up here you can build some sentries back here there's a gargoyle that just spawned if you heard that in the background thank you very much Marasmus. appreciate that I don't know if that audio is going to go through, but there's not too many terrible sightlines here. I mean, there are some sightlines, of course. You want snipers to be able to do something like they can have over in this area. You have this health and ammo you can use to build a teleporter over here. Red spawn is here. They spawn here and they get the options that can go through here where there's currently a gargoyle. Go through that way, leave through this door, leave through that door or they can spawn up here, drop down and go around this, or go through here this way, get a little bit of height advantage here, and move forward through that. You can also sort of build up back here to stop blue team from getting behind you. Um, the cap time for A is relatively high. I believe it's about 20 seconds, and the cap time for B is also about 20 seconds. Seemed to play pretty well with the tested earlier today. Uh, the thing that didn't seem to play well is the fact that, well, for one, I, uh, I forgot to put a teleporter in for Red's first spawn. So when A's captured, Red just gets stuck in the first spawn instead of going to their final spawn back there at C, which is what they're supposed to do. I forgot that because I am doomed. But uh, blue goes from spawning over there when they cap A, they then spawn over here in this area where they can leave from this door or they can head out this way and then go through this door which opens. I have this blocked off because I don't really want red to be able to get over here and sort of set up anything because it's kind of back behind A. But considering of how Blue played, not Blue, of how A played, and that they could use a little bit of more defensive options, I might open that area up and give it for Ray to use for defense. So they can sort of build like a sentry nest up there to block things. I'm not sure how well that'll go, but I think I might try it for Beta, uh, not Beta 2, Alpha 2, just to see how things go. Yes, that is the thing from the middle of Payload Race Pipeline. Uh, it's a cool prop, but I never really have a good way to use it, because it's very specific. But I thought that it fit right there, so that's how I used it. I think it looks cool. That's what this big blue thing is, that you can go through. Uh, I might just, yeah, delete that, so Red can maybe build up sentries or build up a nest back here that they could possibly use to help defend A. Once A is captured, not only does blue go here, Red goes from here to back here at C. They then spawn back here, or then you go through the bottom or go through the top. And the next point becomes B, which is pretty much inspired by B for Mountain Lab slash Man Manor. I'm not really sure how well this is going to play. The thing that I'm most worried about is I think the indoor areas might be a little too cramped. It didn't seem too terribly be too terribly bad in testing, but the big problem that I had when testing this was that as soon as blue got A, they pretty much rolled B and C. Now you do get that problem when you're testing maps for attack and defend or for payload because people who haven't played the map much don't really know where to build up defenses. Um, Red really only held B the last round that we played on it, but I think part of the problem 
is that I have Blue's spawns go forward too much too quick. So I'm thinking for Alpha 2, what I want to change is instead of having... Yes, yes, the gargoyle is gone. Shut up, Merasmus. Instead of having Blue Spawn go from there to there when A is captured, I'm thinking I'll keep Blue Spawn over there till B is captured. And then when B is captured, they will move up to over there and have to go through through all that through this building to get over here to C. Because the big thing was, like, as soon as they got, they captured B, then they got their third forward spawn area, which is this nice outside area. I really like this area. I think it looks pretty cool, but it's just, uh, it's just not working. It's not working right now. I'm actually thinking that maybe I will turn this into Red's first spawn room instead of having Red's first spawn room over here. Turn this into Red's first spawn room so they can go out this way or they can go across the top of this way. And then have it so that when B is captured, then Blue goes from there to here. Now, the biggest thing that I'm not sure about with that is honestly... I don't know if Blue's second spawn is closer to B than their first one. It is a different direction. It's pointing them straight at the B building, unlike the first spawn. But I really don't know if it's closer, if it's a shorter track to go from Blue's second spawn to B to C than it is from their first spawn to B. Um, and if it's if it's if it's longer, then it's going to take longer to even to get to C, which is going to be a problem. C is designed to be the hardest to defend, even though pretty much when I played this today, Blue ended up rolling C because as soon as they got B, they got that spawn room that was right there at B, which probably was a mistake to put it that freaking close to B. But it's so close to C that once Red got destroyed and that was capped. They did not have the time to capture C. It was odd, though. Red was spawn camping here, which, with the way the spawn doors are, they, you don't really think that they would be able to spawn camp, but they were spawn camping it, and as soon as they lost the spawn camp, everybody died up here and was back respawning, so they couldn't build up a defense back here. So I haven't really got a chance to see how well C plays when it comes to defending. Uh, some people are also saying that the placement of pumpkin bombs was kind of annoying. When it comes to a Halloween map, I came up with this philosophy when I was working on Synthetic Event. Uh, when it comes to a Halloween map, you have to have pumpkin bombs because Team Fortress 2's contract system has killing people with pumpkin bombs for all the Halloween maps for Scream Fortress. All Scream Fortress maps or event maps get contracts, and the base contracts for Screen Fortress. One of them is collecting a certain amount of crumpkins, which are the crit pumpkins that drop when players die, and one of them are killing enough players with pumpkin bombs. Now, killing players with pumpkin bombs can be a huge pain in the butt on some maps, such as Maple Ridge Event, because of the location of said pumpkin bombs. They're usually not in locations where people really go all that often. So when you have to get 20 pumpkin bomb kills, it takes forever and a day for that to happen, because you gotta wait to find somebody near a pumpkin bomb to blow it up on them. So I wanted to try to place pumpkin bombs in areas that people actually go to. I did this with Synthetic Event, I tried to do this with Farmageddon, and I tried to do it again here. But, with the playtest for today, uh, the problem was that they're a little too well placed, to the point that they sort of get in the way. And I need to rethink about exactly how I'm going to go about placing them and moving around their placements. Something else that I did with this map with the pumpkin bombs and with the gargoyles is I actually have it so that some of the placement spots are destroyed when points are captured. So, like, the outside pumpkin bombs don't spawn after B is captured because nobody's going to be in this outside area 
But that also causes the problem that it means that none of these outside areas get picked for pumpkin bomb spawn locations. And since it's random where pumpkin bombs are going to be for the amount of pumpkin bombs that are in the map at a time, you could have more spawn locations than you have bombs that appear in a map at a time, so it's a little bit random. It ends up being that it only selects from the few that are inside, so the few that are inside always have bombs in the same places, which is a problem when you I have them located in areas where people are going to be all the dang time. So I think I'm going to lower the amount of pumpkin bombs that can be active at a time and lower, not necessarily lower, and, well, kind of lower, uh, lower the locations where they're going to be at, or at least move them around. Now, I did this with the gargoyles as well, because it's more difficult to collect gargoyles if you have one spawning around point A, and you're currently fighting over point C. Then Red Team doesn't have a chance to get out and get it. I might keep that the same, so that when B is captured, the gargoyle locations outside no longer exist, but considering of how I'm thinking of changing the spawn rooms up, I might keep them outside because outside will always be an area players will be in as I'm going to get rid of the blue inside spawn room and have it for the second spawn room out here. So both times you'll have to go past A, go past B, and move on, and so forth, and so on, and so forth. The only last thing that I have an issue with with this map so far is this little turn up here. I wanted to have this so that... Oh, hey, look, there's a gargoyle. So that when Blue is attacking B, they can go up this way and get over here for some high ground for attacking B. But I think it might be a little bit too good a high ground as it lets them get behind A a little bit too easy. And I was actually had a point where I was playing as a medic with the Blute Slogger, or the Blunt Sausage as I'd like to call it because I can't pronounce its actual name. And I just went... Up here, around here, down here, and I was doing laps over here at sea, going up, over, down, around, up, over, down, around, and I, you just you just shouldn't be allowed to do that. So, I might change this around so that these areas, or these upper areas, are no longer connected, or that at least there's a door there. The main thing that I wanted to have it like this previously, because when Blue spawned over here... I wanted them to be able to easily get across and then go up to this route to attack C. But since how I'm changing things around, and then this would lock once B's captured. Well, with how I'm changing the spawns around, I'd probably get rid of this door locking. And make it so that this drop down doesn't let you go this way. Instead, maybe has you go out this way to where these are. Or over here, keep that over here, or something. I don't know. I still, you st I still want the high ground, but I'm not sure how I want to go about doing it right now. Uh, and maybe that'll make it so that Ray can actually defend B. The themes for the points are: A is a loading dock for the coffins here for the Sinclair Burial Company. B is a coffin workshop, which is why you have all this wood and such everywhere for building said things. And then C is a hidden laboratory thing where Madame Sinclair is up to her old tricks of trying to mess around with the fabrics of reality and bringing people back to life and figuring out human souls and the secrets of such, using science and magic and other such things. I think this one's just going to be science-themed. Synthetic event, I tried to have... Blue science themed and red magic themed, but I don't think that really worked out as well as the idea was. I think I was trying to do too much in too small of a space for that map, so I think I'm just going to stick to the science theme when it comes to this. But uh, I really got to figure out how C's plays, and I think moving around the spawn rooms is probably my best guess or my best way to figure that out. But anyway, there you go. Let me know what you think about the map. In the comment section below on YouTube or on the thread over at tier2maps.net. .net? Is it .net or .com? It's .net. You can, uh, of course, go over there, download it, put it in TF2, load it up, play it for yourself. And I uh, would love to have any feedback. Any and all feedback is always welcome. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Mega Pie Man. You can 
subscribe here for more level design slash voice acting stuff on this, my second channel, or go over to youtube.com slash MegabyManPhD, my main channel, for more fully edited stuff. I think the last thing that I did over there was something about the old 1996 Space Jam game on DOS. I, uh, I need to get back to doing more videos over there, but they're so time-consuming, and nobody watches them, which is disheartening. Anyway, thanks for watching. Talk to you guys.